fear of dying is what keeps most of us alive, an oxymoron in itself yet makes complete sense. Humans fear what we do not know and death is the greatest example. Fear can be man's greatest motivator yet its greatest downfall. Today fear of dying shall be your greatest motivator and tomorrow and for the rest of your eternity for death shall have no power nor possession over us. Death is but an illusion, a false glimpse of a futile solution. Number one, death was never a solution. Whether one is a Christian, Buddhist, Muslim, and so forth, you do not have the power, knowledge, or experience to tell anyone about life after death. Who wrote your books? Did not man or even hundreds of men over a period of time write such books? You can arguably say that those books were the words of gods or angels, yet it is men nature to lie, cheat, deceive others and only benefit themselves. In the end, it was men and only men who wrote such books. There are currently 4,200 religions in the world. Hmm, I wonder which one is the truth. Actually, I don't, which leads me to my next point. Most religious books tell us the eternal glory and everlasting happiness that one shall receive after living a good and benevolent life. It is not in my will or powers to dictate how others live, nor do I give any care because that is their will and own choosing. What I simply wish to convey is this. How can one know for 10,000% sure that the words in those books are without a doubt the absolute truth? Oh, you feel or believe it is the truth. Every life has feelings, including plants and other animals. What makes yours more unique? Long ago, people thought Earth was flat and was the center of the universe. Those books that promise eternal salvation and everlasting glory to those who do as it wills and commands are nothing more than good life teaching, messages, and how one should live. They mention that one should live a good life to serve others and their gods, and to be a good person at heart. This will ultimately lead to a joyful and wonderful afterlife. It is quite impossible to fear death as one is living life with joy while helping others. But for the atheists or those that are confused about life, you can be sure that there is no evidence or real facts about life after death. You can watch all the TV shows, read all the books, talk to all the religious figures you want, believe in the Bible or the words of Shiva if it means something to you. However, what awaits you in the afterlife may just be the one thing you are trying to escape from eternal misery and an endless loop of suffering. What I can tell you for a fact is that men fear what we do not know or comprehend. Men who fear death surely do not know what lies ahead, so they would do all they can to live another day or even another minute. But men who embrace and welcome death with wide open arms, do you think they live a life worth living? I think so. Number two, death is not the end or beginning. Based on the studies provided by the World Health Organization, one million people commit suicide each year. Is that a significant number? No, but that's one million of our fallen brothers and sisters that could have changed the course of history. But even more importantly, they were suffering and living in misery, which really isn't living at all. Can you imagine the others who contemplate suicide? Maybe these numbers are significant, which could be in the hundred million. Some people can endure pain and even suffering for a long time, while others will bend to its will in seconds. Of course, it depends on where you grew up and other factors. I'm sure you don't have that problem though of knowing of growing up in a third world country filled with violence and death, being hungry and thirsty every day, living in fear and not knowing if the sun will shine tomorrow or not. Death cannot be the end because energy is not created nor destroyed, only transfer. Humans are made of energy and so is this whole universe, therefore death isn't real. Even if the Bible and other religion is false, we still have science. Science cannot be false because it's backed by thousands if not millions of hours of studies, experiments, logical calculations, and many other extreme factors. Most of you know that a human body consists of three things. The body, which is just a temporary vessel or container. The mind, which is the ultimate master and control of, of our body's thoughts and conscience and the soul spirit, the most important, which is the core energy, the life force of a higher being. Yes, humans are a higher being because we have free will, thoughts can alter history and rule galaxies and hopefully one day the universe. So that being said, we are pure energy of consciousness. There are trillions of spectrums of lights, rays and waves that the naked human eyes cannot see nor detect that passes through us 24-7. The universe is covered with energy and there is some empty space too. So if energy cannot be created nor destroyed, then what is the only scientific explanation after death? Transformation or transfer to another vessel? 
or another state of consciousness. I'm sure you've all watched or read stories about reincarnations, kids who remember their past lives, the exact day and time they die, when they live, who, if, murdered them, and so on. How could one explain that? Do you truly accept death as the final frontier or is death actually a new beginning? Whichever you choose, know that it may not be the end. Number three, fear a life without meaning or purpose. Yesterday I was going through my YouTube comments and replies. Basically it was about motivation and talent. Dwayne Johnson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stalin, and other well-known celebrities got to where they were in life because they put in the time and effort, not because they are talented or gifted. To get to the point, some of the replies said I was wrong and that in life, no matter how hard someone works or tries, there are others who have talent and will always get farther in life. I didn't counterattack with negativity, I just left it as is. And do you see why 99% of us are just merely simply existing and doing our time? When we give in to defeat and accept our fate, when we have ultimately lost the will to live and to life itself, it saddens me very much to see how humans as a whole cannot learn to rise and conquer life. You are the way you are because you have wired yourself to such beliefs through habitual actions and thoughts. What brings comfort is easy and quick is usually accepted without hesitation or thought. Yet, what brings suffering is considered bad and seldomly accepted. The only way for humans to grow is through pain. If it weren't for the suffering that I've endured, I would have be lost in doing what 99% of what others is doing, existing. Do not let others, books, and even gods tell you how to live. If you do, then you are nothing but a slave. What is the point of life? Be your own master. Be one with this universe. It is so easy for someone to hand you a book, tell you that this is the book of truth and to follow everything it tells you and promise internal glory. Oh boy, that sounds amazing. How about the book of knowledge and education? This book explains how one can create and live the greatest life with no limits or boundaries, yet he will confront many challenges, face and no defeat as well as failure. However, if he, she never gives up and keeps pushing, then he, she will have created the ultimate life, the ultimate purpose for themselves. Which book sounds more realistic? Life in the universe favors the strong and bold, not the weak nor pathetic beings. You see what happens to the weak, they are left to die and fend for themselves. Look at the top 1% of the most influential figures that have ever walked this earth. They've become legends, made a name for themselves, and left a colossal impact on life. They have done what any humans ought to do. Live life with a purpose, live life to the absolute fullest. Today, death has no power or influence over me. If death embraces me at this very moment, I will welcome it like an old friend that I haven't seen for eons. When you live with a mentality of fear and death, well, you live in fear. Is that how you want to live? Number four, choose your own destiny. All humans are given free will, yet not everyone can express such gifts. If one is born in a cruel and unforgiving environment, then may have God have mercy on you. As for the fortunate ones, we have only two choices. Yes, just two. However, the one you choose will dictate your entire life and future. One, believe in other men and the teaching of God. Two, Believe in thyself and forge thy own destiny. Ask yourself this question. Are you content with life? Probably more than half of us would say yes, but why? Contentment is good and acceptable for most of us, but why can't we be in love with our lives? Are you content with your partner or job? Or are you in love with them? Everyone and every religion tells us we should be content with our lives and just live as normal beings. 95% of us are already doing that and the sad part is that this unfortunate event will last centuries or even millenniums to come. How long will this preposterous ideology keep us humans from rising to the top? Religion, governments, friends and families all tell us that we need to be content with what we have. When we learn that this isn't about them, it is about you and only you, this is your life. Whether it is first or last, it is still your life. If you want to live your life based on books and the words of men, then so be it. That is why most of us will be average and never amount to any greatness. The rest of us, let us do what we were born to do to forge and create our own destinies for ourselves. Maybe the reason you are fed up with life, unhappy with yourselves, confused and misguided is because you let others dictate your destiny. I was that very person. The day I took destiny into my hands was the day things changed. Never will I let such a thing slip away from my firm and steadfast grip. I'm fully aware and realize how men can live like legends while others eat the leftovers from dogs. It is because they are in full control of their destiny and choose to make it of it as they will. Men who believe that outside force or external factors control their destiny will be just that, for he who believes it shall have it. We can believe in whatever we so desire to. That is everyone's right. We have all have opinions and I fully respect that. 
But just look at the stories of the greatest men and women in history and tell me, do these men believe in God or themselves? Imagine you are God. Do you want to decide the fate of your own creation or let them shape their own destiny? If you gave them free will and knew that their powers are limited beyond comparison to yours, then why not give them free will just so they can serve you when the time comes? Your son, daughter, if you have them, do you want what is the best for them and teach them how to live life or do you want to control everything they do and dictate their future? Do not stop believing in your faith if it gives you hope and strength. But if you are not living life to the highest degree and your faith is halting you from such luxury, then maybe it is time to do things for yourself. After all, God helps those who help themselves. For far too long have I been misguided and blinded by the teachings of men and gods. The answer I found, although it may not be far from the truth, however, it gives me full confidence and assurance of my own will in life. The answer is that each and every one of us has the power to create the life that we so desire. And that could be anything. Your purpose is different from mine, yet it gives meaning and life to you. My purpose gives meaning to my life and my existence. The greatest question that all men utter since the dawn of time. Why are we here? What is my purpose? Is there a God? And like such, these questions that once made me fear of dying and question my own existence are now irrelevant. So what if there is a God? So what if we only have one life and that's it? So what if life is just using a... The only thing that should matter is you. As far as I can tell, we have... We all have this one life that in this one body. We can either be chained up and do the will of others and accept our destiny, or we can write our own book and live life without a single regret. Today I am liberated. Death has no power over me and it shall never again. The notion of eternity and hell doesn't stagger me one bit. Why? Because back then men had their ways. Today men and women are of equal in every sense. Men will use words, lies, tricks, and even religion to take advantage of women and other weaker men. Hell to me is nothing but a wild and vivid fable, just like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. Religion is a way to keep law and order, as you can say. It teaches one how to live life and what we should strive for. However, if religion tells you that men are greater than women, how your life has been written in the stars, and that no matter what you do, your destiny and death is already foretold, well, I call that BS on that. I mean, really, some book is going to tell me how I am to die, how my fate has already been foreseen. No, thank you. Whoever or whatever gave me life, use it to your full utmost advantage and build your own roads. After countless years of listening and taking advice from others, maybe, just maybe, it is time to follow your own heart and take your own advice. In no way should you abandon your faith. However, our surroundings and upbringing shape who we are. Kids who grew up in violent places believe violence is the part of life, as opposed to kids who grew up in a monastery would most likely follow that teaching. Many choose to accept their destiny because they do not know how to set themselves free. That is why suffering exists, because of the lack of education and knowledge. Free yourself from such suffering and burdens. Break your chains, my friends, and create the path that you seem so worthy. Live your life because at any moment it just may be your last. Just because someone hands you a book and tells you that this is the truth, it doesn't mean you have to be so gullible to believe it. Why not read it and then go search for the truth on your own? For so long have I been confused, misguided, afraid, and blinded to the life's meaning, my purpose, and who I was. Fear of death, fear of God, fear of living, and fear itself shall never have power nor control over me. Do you plan to live life with fear knowing that death is inevitable? Or do you plan on living like a legend, live like a god, because gods and legends never die? Thanks again for joining in, and please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and have a great day. Thank you.